The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. A man stares out into the sky. There is no moon, no stars, no form of light in the darkness above. He stares into the empty, ink-stained blackness of space, lost in thought at what could lie beyond the void above, as if something was pulling on his mind from that abyss beyond. Someone, no. Something was calling out to the man from beyond the stars. Beyond the depths of the cosmos, the man realized that he was being watched. This was no vacant stare, however, as he soon realized he was no more than an ant to a human to his observer. He felt something overcome his senses before visions of unimaginable horrors permeated from within his own head. It occurred to this man that whatever was watching him was staring through him, not paying any attention to his meaningless existence. What if you were to fall asleep one night, only to realize that you were trapped within your dream for eternity? Unable to wake up while demons and otherworldly creatures tormented you about your imprisonment within your own nightmares? Or finding yourself in a forgotten fishing village, cut off from the rest of the world? The people there are disfigured, deformed, with a sickly shamble, their narrow fish-like heads and bulging eyes staring at you as you walk around their mysterious village. Cosmic and Eldritch Horror are some of my favorite types of horror out there. With many varying degrees of the creepy crawlies, Junji Ito and H.P. Lovecraft are some of the best writers to describe the Eldritch Horrors and the cosmic deities that lay beyond the stars. However, today I'll primarily be focusing on H.P. Lovecraft and how he is able to captivate his readers with such an unnerving and sinister attraction to his stories. But first, let's give a little bit of history to the author himself. On August 20th, 1890, in Providence, Rhode Island, Howard Phillips Lovecraft was born. Lovecraft did not have a very good childhood, though. In fact, it was a very unsettling one with a lot of heartache. Within the first three years of Howard's life, his father was assigned to a hospital for a mental disorder he had developed. His father spent the last six years of his life confined to that hospital where he eventually died. Similar to his father, Lovecraft's mother was also confined to the same mental institute in the last years of her life, in which she died during a failed gallbladder surgery, leaving H.P. Lovecraft an orphan. This was detrimental to Lovecraft's already declining mental state. It's safe to say that these horrible experiences with the healthcare system caused his fear of doctors later in life, which later contributed to his death that we'll discuss later. Lovecraft was also a very sickly child growing up. He often stayed home and did most of his schoolwork there. Because of this, Lovecraft didn't have many friends nor social skills. However, Lovecraft was a creative child because of this, and he did a lot of reading during his early years. While spending many of those years reading, Lovecraft found an interest in astronomy. He also preferred horror stories and poems written by Edgar Allan Poe that no less inspired his own writing skills, which would become apparent in his later works such as The Call of Cthulhu or The Mountains of Madness. Unfortunately, Lovecraft wasn't known for his works until after his death in 1937. His death was ultimately caused by his distrust and fear of doctors. Because of his crippling fear of them due to both of his parents' unfortunate luck involving the healthcare system, Lovecraft waited too long to go see a doctor, and when he finally did, they diagnosed him with a small intestinal cancer. He was hospitalized the same month and died on March 15, 1937 in his hometown, Providence. Lovecraft's works usually center around cosmic horror, and in short, the truth behind everything in a vastly large scale that we as humans fail to understand. Much of his work has inspired many other examples of eldritch and cosmic horrors, such as Junji Ito's Uzumaki, a horror manga about a town that becomes obsessed with spirals, going as far as to mutilate themselves or even transforming into grotesque creatures such as snails. By the end of the story, the people have gone mad and turned into a spiral themselves. Or we can take a look at Stephen King's The Mist, when a group of townsfolk gets stuck in a supermarket when a strange mist surrounds the town, causing twisted, eldritch Lovecraftian creatures to spring forth from the dense fog. The fear of the unknown, as Lovecraft would put it, makes the people tense and dangerous to one another, believing that extreme measures must be taken to preserve themselves. It's not until the end of the movie that the fog disperses and everything returns back to normal. And we can even take a look at Bloodborne. Out of all the examples, this one is the most inspired by Lovecraft's works. The whole game is a message about Elder Gods and how he looked too far into the forbidden cosmic truth to become one with the old gods. However, as one finds out after hours of playing, we were never meant for such greatness. We only spelled out our disastrous doom by looking into the cosmic truth, the cosmic horror. With it came things far worse than death. 
But of course, none of these would come to be without Lovecraft's astronomical and sinister ideas that he established through his written books. The Call of Cthulhu, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, Dagon, The Beast in the Cave. He has written well over 100 works. Dagon, a short story written by Lovecraft in 1917, was published two years later in 1919. The story tells the tale from the perspective of a former officer in World War I, who had become addicted to morphine to help cope with his hellish dreams after he was lost at sea. The narrator described floating at sea for several days before coming across a black mire covered in carcasses of sea creatures and other indescribable monsters. And afterward, the man finds a white stoned monolith covered in hieroglyphics in the shape of sea life. He deciphers that some form of god named Dagon is worshipped by an aquatic civilization, much to his horror. Soon after, a horrendous creature crawls out of the muck, charging towards this large monolith, causing the narrator to flee back to his lifeboat in horror. Unfortunately, he's caught in a storm, which he later wakes up in a hospital from. The man is since haunted by the creature he spotted on the island. It's soon revealed that the story is meant to be a suicide note before the man takes his own life. Before he is able to, however, he hears the wet sounds of something outside his apartment room. He then decided to go for the window, taking his life. This is just a brief synopsis over many of Lovecraft's tales set in his own universe, flooded with a typhoon of mysteries and forgotten gods. Many of these have been adapted to modern day media, board games, and even video games. Take a look at Stranger Things and D&D. You can't tell me this isn't inspired by some cosmic alien horror. Anyways, as I end this video, I hope you found some interest in Lovecraft's works, and see how influential it is in the past 100 years. I'll put a link down in the description on a website where you can read some of his stuff for free. With that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and consider subscribing for more content. Goodbye.